Welcome to this series of videos to help improve your practical skills and knowledge about preparing and cooking red meat. These videos are brought to you by Meat and Education. Hello, I'm going to demonstrate the range of knife skills you can use when preparing and cooking red meat. There are a wide range of knives that are used in the kitchen, but most often you use a small vegetable knife and perhaps a cook's knife. Whatever type or size of knife you use, it's important that knives are sharp, stored safely, held carefully and correctly when being used, and never left to soak in a sink, as someone could cut their hands. First, let's look at how to de-rind meat. Bacon is available without rind, the tough outer skin of the pork. But here's some bacon with rind that we want to remove. While you can use a knife to do this, it's sometimes easier to use kitchen scissors. Kitchen scissors tend to be multi-purpose, but should only be used in the kitchen. Sometimes it's necessary to remove the visible fat from red meat. To remove the visible fat, hold the meat carefully and run the knife around the edge of the meat, the muscle part, trimming away the fat. Here are some different cuts of meat. You can see visible fat found under the skin and between the muscles. A small amount of fat is also found in connective tissue surrounding the bundles of muscle fibres. This is called invisible fat or marbling. Meat can be prepared for cooking in many different ways. Cutting, slicing and mincing all increase the surface area of the meat, making it easier to cook. I'm going to show you how to prepare meat safely and accurately. Pork tenderloin is a great cut of meat for a stir fry. Cut it into thin strips so that it cooks quickly and is tender. Beef used for stewing or casseroling should be cut into even sized pieces so that it cooks evenly and becomes tender in the oven. Lamb can be used to make curries, stews and stir fries. Cutting into even sized pieces is again important along with removing any excess fat. A range of ingredients can be used to stuff cuts of meat such as pork tenderloin. Use your knife to carefully cut a pocket in the meat, making sure that you do not cut all the way through to the other side. Now let's take a look at cutting meat against the grain. Here's some red meat that shows the grain, the muscle fibres. See how they run in one direction. If you cut the meat along the length of the fibres, you increase the toughness. If you cut the meat against the grain, across the fibres, you shorten them, which makes the meat more tender. This applies to both raw and cooked meats. Here I'm using the pork tenderloin to make stir-fried soy and honey pork, served with broccoli, chilli, lemon and goat cheese. Because it's a tender cut of meat, it has been prepared by cutting into thin strips and can be cooked quickly. It could be served with noodles and garnished with chopped parsley. For more information about red meat, cooking and healthy eating, as well as lots of recipe ideas, go to meatandeducation.com.